welcome back in today's lecture we will discuss birth date markov chains and then our discussion about birth date markov chains will lead us to uh, reversibility which is a very important concept we will discuss reversibility and reversible markov chains so birth date chain is a chain that looks like this okay specifically the transitions are allowed only between consecutive states okay so let's say the state space is 0 1 2 3 dot 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 we are allowed to have transitions only between i i plus 1 i plus 1 i okay and self transitions are allowed okay for any i p i i plus 1 p i plus 1 i can be positive p i i can be positive okay but p i j is equal to 0 for all uh, i j that differ by more than 1. Okay? So, you cannot jump from state 3 to state 1 or state 4 to state 1, okay? not allowed in a birth date chain. All right? A Markov chain that has a structure like this is called a birth date Markov chain. The name is because uh, all these transitions from i to i plus 1 can be thought of as a birth in the population. And uh, transition from i plus 1 to i can be thought of as a death. Okay? And if, if the self transition there is no change in the population. Okay? So, these birth death uh, chains can be used to analyze uh, populations, they can be used, to, they are widely used in analyzing queuing systems. All right? So, these birth death processes are very important. Now, this birth death chains, if you write out the now, the question is when is this uh, chain uh, positive recurrent? Can we say something about its steady state, steady state behavior? Can we say something about its uh, uh, stationary distribution and all that, right? So, the, all that we have to discuss. Uh, so, we are taking the forward jump probabilities as pi's, okay, and backward jump probabilities as qi's. So, if you are in state i, uh, the probability of a birth is pi, the probability of a death is qi. And 1 minus pi minus qi is the probability of a self transition into state i. Because at state 0, the population is 0, uh, so there is no death. Okay? Birth, birth probability is p0. Okay? That is the model we have. Now, for this, uh, for this Markov chain, if you write out the, uh, so let us write out balance equations. See what are the balance equations? You should have sum over pi i equals 1 and we should have pi i is equal to sum over pi j p j i for all i. Right? These are the balance equations. Now, if you write this, so you remember that for this uh, Markov chain p j i is 0 whenever absolute value of i minus j is greater than 1. Okay? So, for this system, for this particular uh, birth date chain, the balance equation assume a very simple form. So, if you write out for state 0, you get phi 0 is equal to 1 minus p naught phi naught phi 0 plus q 1 phi 1. Okay? And for all other states i, we have um, pi i equals p i minus 1. So, please note that the, you can get to state i only from i minus 1 or i plus 1 or i, right? Because it is a birth death chain. So, we can write this as p i minus 1 i pi i minus 1 plus p i plus 1 i pi i plus 1 sorry I, I should write q right so this p uh, you know in my notation this is correct but you know i have notated this as p i minus 1 right p i minus 1 is the probability of birth p i plus 1 i is simply uh, q i right so there is nothing wrong with what i wrote but i have used the notation q i for the probability of death uh, maybe I should write q i plus 1 here actually, q i plus 1 pi i plus 1 
pi minus 1 pi i minus 1 plus 1 minus pi minus q i this is the self transition pi i all right. So, we have these two equations. So, this is true for pi naught and this holds this bit holds for i greater than or equal to 1 all right. Now, if you simplify this you just get what do you get you get pi naught p naught equals pi 1 q 1 right you can just rearrange this equation to get that and then if you plug this uh, equation into the equation for pi 1 all right you will get so you have an equation for pi 1 right so you can write that equation for pi 1 and you rearrange you get pi 1 p 1 is equal to pi 2 q 2 all right and so on Okay, you can get so if you keep doing this you can get pi i q i inductively right you can use induction to show that pi i q i is equal to pi i plus 1 q i uh, sorry pi i p i pi i p i is equal to pi i plus 1 q i plus 1 okay for all i equal to 1 okay. So, I am just deriving this. So, I wrote out the balance equations and I am simplifying this just using basic algebra. So, I am getting this form pi i p i is equal to pi i plus 1 q i plus 1 all right. So, that has a nice interpretation. So, if you just look at this some state i and state i plus 1 right that is p i and that is q i plus 1 right. Those are self transitions. What we are saying is that so, we are saying pi i p i is equal to pi i plus 1 q i plus 1 ok. So, if you look at if you look at a cut across this graph like this then what we are saying is that pi i p i is the rate of transitions forward all right and pi i plus 1 q i plus 1 is equal to the rate of transitions backwards. So, this pi i p i is equal to pi i plus 1 q i plus 1 is simply saying that for any two pairs of states i and i plus 1 the rate of forward transition is equal to the rate of backward transition. All right, that makes perfect sense. Uh, in fact, there is an easier way to see this. Uh, if you look at any two states i and i plus 1, the number of transitions and you take any time t, all right. So, at any time, the number of transitions that have happened in the forward direction and the number of transitions that have happened in the reverse direction can differ by at most 1, all right, no matter where you start. There, you can never have two transitions more in the forward direction than in the reverse direction that is simply not possible in this chain all right if you think about it. So, you go forward then you have to come back to go forward again right. So, that is why the number of forward transitions and the number of reverse transitions can differ by at most one all right. Therefore, the rate of forward transition should be equal to rate of reverse transits, transitions steady state all right. Uh, so, that gives us this equation all right. Now, the structure of the chain itself is such that see this is one uh, irreducible chain. So, everything communicates also the Markov chain is aperiodic all right because there are self transitions. So, the question is when is this positive recurrent and all that we have to see right. Now, if you manage to find a pi i, see pi i is the steady state, uh, the stationary distribution pi i has to satisfy these equations and if you get a valid probability distribution pi i, then we are done, right. Then we have shown positive recurrence and you have gotten the stationary distribution. So, in fact, you can get, get all of this from uh, these equations. So, you have, uh, if you just proceed with this, you get pi i, so if you just look at pi i is simply. Uh, pi i minus 1 p i minus 1 uh, divided by uh, q q i right. So, this is always true this I can keep keep on iterating right. So, this I can write it as uh, pi i minus 2 p i minus 2 over q i minus 1 times 
uh, p i minus one over q i dot 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 right. So finally, this will come out. So if I call, let's say, let me call rho i as Let's say define. Rho i is equal to p i over q i plus one. Okay. So what I'm saying is I'm taking the probability of the forward transition from i. So the probability of that transition p i over q i plus one as uh, the ratio to be rho i. All right. This is just some number. All right. So with that understanding, you will simply get um, pi i is equal to rho i minus one pi i minus one, which is equal to rho i minus two rho i minus one uh, times pi i minus two, and so on and so forth. So you can finally you will get rho to the i times pi naught. Okay. This is true for all i greater than or equal to 1. Rho i, sorry, I should say rho, uh, sorry, these rows are not, they are not yet the same, right. So, I should say this is product, I beg your pardon. So, this should be rho uh, j is equal to 0 to i minus 1. Is that correct? So, you just keep on inductively doing this, right. So, this you will get rho j times pi naught. Uh, I hope this is correct. Yeah, pi i, this is correct, all right. So next, so next we normalize. Right. So we want some over pi i, i is equal to 0 to infinity equal to 1. Right. So this will give me pi naught is equal to 1 over 1 plus product. This pi is not, this pi is big pi, okay. This pi is big product, uh, product. It is not your steady state pi. Product j is equal to 0 to i minus 1 uh, rho j. Uh, I apologize, I have to write this again, 1 plus sum over i equals 1 to infinity uh, product j is equal to 0 to i minus 1 rho j, all right. And so this is your pi naught and once you know pi naught, you can put this in here to find pi i for any i. Now the question is, is this pi naught is 1 over something, so this big expression, right? The question is, is the denominator finite? If the denominator is finite, then pi naught will be strictly positive, right? Otherwise, if the, if the numerator, if sorry, if the denominator is infinite, then pi naught will be 0, then all the pi i's will be 0, right? So the thing is, the chain will be positive recurrent, the birth, death is positive recurrent if uh, denominator is finite, that is if sum i is equal to 1 to infinity, uh, product j is equal to 0 to i minus 1 rho j. If this is finite, okay. So, this is, this is, you can call that guy as some nu i minus 1, all right. So, if the sum over nu i minus 1 is finite, then uh, the birthday chain is positive recurrent, all right. So, a sufficient condition for positive recurrence would be for example, if uh, 
if rho j is less than or equal to 1 minus epsilon for some epsilon greater than 0 and for all j, then this is a sufficient condition, okay, because then this summation would be dominated by a geometric series and you will have a finite sum, okay. This is not necessary condition of course, but it is a sufficient condition, okay. In particular, if rho j is equal to rho for all j, then phi naught will simply be 1 over 1 plus sum over uh, i is equal to 1 to infinity rho to the i minus 1, okay. So, if I, if all the if all the forward transient probabilities and reverse transient probabilities are such that the ratio between them is constant for all i. For example, if forward transient probabilities and reverse transient probabilities are the same in all states, then you will have this simple expression. And if this will just turn out to be uh, 1 minus rho, this is just a geometric series if rho is strictly less than 1, okay. So, if rho is less than 1, then you have a positive recurrent birth death process. So, pi naught is will simply be 1 minus rho and pi i will simply be rho power i times 1 minus rho for i greater than or equal to 1, okay. This is because we know that pi i is rho power i times, uh, was it rho power i or I, rho power i times uh, yeah, this from this equation, right? Rho power i times uh, pi naught. Okay. So this is great. So usually, so if rho is less than one, this sort of homogeneous birth date process. If the forward probabilities and reverse probabilities are the same, if the rho is less than one, you have positive recurrence for sure. Okay. Typically, when rho equal to 1, you will have null recurrence and rho greater than 1, um, you will have transients typically, all right. Although, if there is self transitions, uh, null recurrence is also possible, okay. So, this is something that you can prove. There is an exercise in your book. So, rho, rho less than 1 positive recurrence and these are the steady state probabilities. So, these birth death chains. Uh, are very nice nice Markov processes which satisfy this uh, this kind of equation where between any two pairs pi i and i plus 1 you have the probability of the rate of transition from i to i plus 1 is equal to the rate of transition from i plus 1 to i okay and this holds for any two pairs of states between which transitions are possible so this kind of balance equations are called local balance equations okay this is in contrast to global balance, which is which is usual balance equations, which is these, all right. These are called global balance, and as opposed to that, this is called local balance, where between any two pairs of states, you have the flow matches in either direction, all right. We will see that whenever this is kind of a local balance equation is satisfied between two pairs of states, any two pairs of states, then such a process uh, has a certain reversible property. Uh, in particular, a process like this where the local balance is satisfied will have statistically indistinguishable power properties when run forward in time or when run backward in time, okay. So, this uh, these birth date processes are a nice example of uh, reversible Markov chains, okay. Birth date Markov chains are reversible Markov chains which we will study next. Of course, not all reversible Markov chains are birth date chains, alright, that is not true. <coughs> 